Uh, before we go in, I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes reading some of the Ansem reports because I never bothered checking on them. What did Sora learn? Alright, draw. Light and darkness, what? Has a secret special... Excuse me, what? Alright, two become one. Alright, um... Yeah, I'm gonna read some of the Ansem reports. Don't worry, I'll cut this out. Unless, you know, uh, I feel like having like a separate section or a separate video that just is just me reading some of the Ansem reports. But yeah, I'm gonna read them from one to, uh, well, however many we got. Where are the Ansem reports? Might be with Jiminy. There you are. Know it all. What? Is this all? Like, did I get all 13? Alright, let's read Ansem Report number one. My efforts these many years have come to fruition. With the world I govern with the world I govern having become a paradise worthy of being called Radiant Garden. Nurtured by the pure water that is the source of life, flagrant frout fragrant wow flagrant <laughs> fragrant flowers bloom in abundance and the people face each day my efforts these many years oh wait no okay okay but there is light darkness but where there is light darkness also lurks as noted in my earlier reports i must solve the mystery of this darkness of the heart this paradise depends on it i shall perform an experiment to probe the depths of a person's heart one of my own apprentices, Xehanort, has volunteered to be a subject. The young man has served me ever since I nursed him back from death's door some years ago. He had lost all his memories at the time, but later showed remarkable intellectual curiosity and readily absorbed my teachings, gaining deep wisdom. Any mental immaturity is surely due to his young age. If I explore Xehanort's heart with psychological tests, I may be able to recall the past locked away within. My apprentice, my apprentice even... No, oh, my apprentice even has also shown great interest in Xehanort's memory. Even. Okay, there's a new person named even. Okay, but is he really the right subject? Xehanort does in indeed exhibit extraordinary talents. Too extraordinary. Perhaps they're even superhuman. Ooh, so he's something else. Okay. Uh, I read this before, but I think I'll just read it again. I've made a grave mistake. My study of the darkness of the heart began with a simple psychological test and quickly snowballed. Spurred on by my youngest apprentice, Ienzo, I constructed a massive laboratory in my basement of my castle. Unbeknownst to me, my six apprentices then began collecting a large number of subjects on which to perform dangerous experiments into the darkness of the heart. As soon as I found out, I called my princes together and ordered them not only to cease their studies, but to destroy the results of their research thus far. What on earth was happening within the hearts of my six beloved apprentices? While pursuing the mystery of the darkness of the heart, could they themselves have strayed into its depths? I'm not sure if it's like apprentices or apprentices. All right. Yet I remain the most foolish of all for having begun these experiments. We are not meant to interfere in the depths of another of another's heart, no matter what our reasons for doing so. And my error plunged me into despair. A visitor from another world soothed my dejected soul. A tiny king named Mickey came wielding a legendary key, the infamous Keyblade, said to bring for bring both chaos and prosperity to the world. Huh? I thought the Keyblade. I thought there were only like two Keyblades or something. He was very knowledgeable on many topics, and we deepened our friendship as we conversed companionably. Upon his advice, I decided to review the data obtained at my basement lab. That is when I discovered the Ansem reports. Though they bore my name, they only the only one I had written was number zero. Apparently, he had gone on to pen numbers one through eight himself. He asked the first subject in my foolish experiments. Oh, Xehanort. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Chaos affects not only this world, but many wor many other worlds besides. In the Ansem reports my apprentice Xehanort had written under my name, I found the records of his hideous experiments, along with his hypotheses about the door that appeared out of the darkness in my basement. 
All living things have hearts, and all hearts hold darkness deep within. Worlds are no exception. If a world is a being, the heart it holds must be colossal. And the darkness at its core must be monstrous indeed. Did Xehanort pass through that door in an attempt to contact the Dark Realm? No, not only Xehanort. It appears my other five apprentices, believing it was for the sake of research, stared deep into the darkness and were pulled into it. Even... Even Ienzo, Brag, Dylan, a alias, alias, they have ceased to be human. I too have had everything taken away, uh, taken away from me, banished to a hollow realm of nothingness. What is Xehanort hoping to gain with my pilfered existence? Will people cease to smile? If the light of hope has been extinguished, I shall henceforth walk with darkness as a friend. Here. Here, in the realm of nothingness to which I have been relegated, darkness in the midst of nothing, darkness in zero. Thus, I shall be known as Diz. Oh, discarding the stolen name Ansem and going in search of revenge. The distant days spent in that beautiful paradise are an illusion now. How long have I been in here, banished to the realm of nothingness? It is only by relying upon my anger and hatred that I have been able to retain my sense of self here where all existence is nullified. My heart is being overcome with hatred towards my apprentices, P possessed by the darkness and with anger I feel for stupidly allowing myself to be betrayed. Is this darkness eating away at my heart? I cannot continue to idle away, idle away my time here. What are Xehanort and the others attempting to do? I must unravel the mystery of these and some reports, intercept my apprentices and defeat them. That is my mission, the only way to repay the world for my sins. To those beings who lack hearts, the heartless must be the key. The darkness of the heart made flesh, cursed shadows who not only lack hearts but multiply by seizing hearts from any and all living things. Where have they come from and where are they going? Three elements combine to create life, a heart, a soul, and a body. But what of the soul and body left behind when the heart is lost? When the soul leaves the body, its vessel life gives away gives way to death but what about when the heart leaves a being does not perish when its heart leaves its body the heart alone disappears into darkness there is little time if i remain in the in this realm much longer i will certainly learn these answers the hard way my heart is already a captive of the darkness oh that's interesting in this realm where all existence has been dis disintegrated I have just barely managed to preserve my sense of self by continuing to think and to write. It is, a, is it, it is a place where even time has lost all meaning. Eternity is but a moment here. I must make haste. Certainly their plans are already underway. The Heartless must be the key to unraveling this mystery. The six traders were operating a laboratory that turned out these those cursed shadows. Not only did they generate pure blood Heartless from living hearts, but they then use those heartless to synthesize artificial versions of the creatures as well. These synthetic heartless bore insignias and were called emblems. Pure, pure blood or pure blood or emblem, these heartless act only to fulfill their instinctive needs. They single-mindedly detect hearts and swarm around them. A human's command would be ineffective. The heartless would easily steal the human's heart and use it to increase their own rank. But what if an even stronger Heartless was giving the orders? If he cast aside his own soul and body and became a Heartless, wouldn't he be able to control the the otherwise interactable... What was that? Intractable. Heartless. Furthermore, wouldn't he be planning to make use of those creatures' instincts? If the Heart-seeking Heartless have their sights set on a larger, more powerful Heart, their ultimate goal is crystal clear. The largest heart in existence, the heart of the world. This is all conject this is all conjecture. But it would seem he is utilizing the heartless in his search for a path leading to the heart of the world. Ooh. My choice to befriend darkness here in the midst of nothingness was a sound one. The moment I stared straight ahead with a calm heart, neither rejecting darkness nor fearing it, I gained a newfound power, a super a superhuman power, the power of darkness. It is likely Xehanort and the others were enraptured by this power, eventually becoming its prisoners. I do not intend to allow my heart to be devoured by the darkness as they did, of course. With this new power, I uncovered a corridor of darkness that connects the realm of nothingness to the outside world. While it is still difficult to come and go as I please, my banishment is now a thing of the past. 
To deceive Xehanort and my apprentices, I first used my power to change form before returning to the Realm of Light. As I had expected, Xehanort had become a Heartless. Under my name, he commanded other Heartless in quests to snatch away the hearts of many different worlds. At the center of the hearts Xehanort had stolen was Kingdom Hearts, which attracts tremendous darkness to itself and attempts to send any and all matter back into its depths. The other five had disappeared. Have they become Heartless, like Xehanort, or did they vanish after Xehanort exploited them? I became familiar with an unusual entity while pursuing the truth. It is the soul and body that remain. It is the soul and body that remain when a being loses its heart. When a heartless is born, those entities disappear from the realm of light to be reborn as entirely new beings in a completely different realm. He's talking about the nobodies. Okay, I read this one. While being born of darkness and those lacking hearts may find them convenient, it is dangerous for others to make much of the corridors of darkness. Darkness erodes the heart. In search of a place to proceed with my research and planning and planning from prying prying eyes, I found myself in Twilight Town. It is a quiet village, forgotten in the chasm between in the chasm, sorry, in the chasm between light and darkness. <laughs> that reminded me of Chameleon. <laughs> In the chasm between light and darkness, I situated myself in the basement of an abandoned mansion standing beyond the woods. My underground research or research resulted in one new discovery after another. When a heartless is born, the body and soul left behind are reborn into this world as a different being. They possess uh, different intentions than their heartless brethren. And while it is unclear what these sentient beings are, are after, it would appear that they are responsible for much bedlam in the world. My erstwhile friend, the king, and his subjects, along with a hero wielding the Keyblade, are battling the Heartless even as a new threat approaches. This new threat, they have given themselves a fitting name, I suppose. These beings, the Nobodies. These non-beings, Nobodies. A great number of Nobodies have lost human form, as have the Heartless. Yet the Nobody born of someone with a strong heart retains its shape, with but the faintest visible changes. It appears my betrayers have retained their human forms as nobodies and are gathering more followers in the hopes of furthering a new scheme. Organization 13, formed of 13 nobodies with my betrayers at its core, has divided into two. They are said to be carrying out some sort of research, seeking to uncover the plans of this organization. I've decided to head for where the six mem where six of its members have gathered, towering over the outer limits of the realm between darkness and light, Castle Oblivion. Okay, the first time I read this, I did not understand, but now it makes a lot more sense. It appears that I have been too distracted by the behavior of Xehanort and his cohorts, and by the events occurring in their vicinity. My friends struggle to protect the realm of light from the threat of Heartless. From the th from the threat of Heartless is now over. My friends, oh, my friends struggle to protect the realm of light from the from the threat of Heartless is now over. With Xehanort's Heartless, going by the name Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, defeated at last. The other wielder of the Keyblade, this hero traveled from world to world, sealing up keyholes and laying Heartless low. Meanwhile, the King had, have, had dived into the Realm of Darkness, worked with the Keyblade-wielding hero to close the door to Kingdom Hearts from the realms of both Darkness and Light, thus holding off the threat of Tremendous Darkness. But there is still a great number of Heartless afoot, and Organization 13 and the Nobodies continue to be active in the shadows. Indeed, the world is, a, the world is still a very dangerous place. We must find a way to do battle with these enemies. Thus, I will both make amends and have my revenge. It is for this reason that I infiltrated Castle Oblivion. It consists of 13 floors above and 12 floors below ground, with the contents of its white room with the contents of its white rooms transforming in response to its visitors' memories. Organization 13 was conducting experiments on memory here. The subject, the subject in these experiments, a girl named Namine, appears to possess extremely unusual abilities. Were they at attempting to derive something from these powers? Refusing to be distracted by Organization 13, I had returned to my own secret research when a new visitor appeared at the castle today. It was Sora the Keyblade-wielding hero who had defeated Ansem and his companions. It was Sora, the Keyblade-wielding hero and his companions. Deep underground, the sense of darkness arose. All the players are coming together, it would seem. Wait, when was this? 
Hmm. Okay. I should expect nothing less from a Keyblade wielding hero. Sora and friends defied the machinations of Organization 13 and rescued Naminé. Naminé was a witch who controlled the memories of the others. Wait, did we really? I don't think we did yet, though. Control the memories of the others. Most likely, these powers were achieved through a special process when she was born. Naminé is a nobody, created when a young girl's heart left her body. Sh yet, she has no corresponding heartless. This is because the young girl in this case was a princess. Kyrie, a resident of Radiant Garden over which I had ruled, was one of the seven princesses that uphold the realm of light. Naminé is Kyrie's nobody. Actually, that kind of does make sense now, considering that um, uh, how connected Roxas' uh, nobody was to Naminé. With no darkness in, Ky in her heart, Kyrie pr produced no heartless, and instead of vanishing, her body remained in the realm of light. In other words, both the nobody called Naminé and the heartless, proof of a lost heart, are extremely unstable beings who lack the bodies needed to produce a nobody. Therefore, they also lack Kyrie's memories. One reason for this may be that Kyrie's heart did not return to the darkness when separated from her body, but rather migrated to another vessel deep within Sora's heart. That is, Naminé is an alter ego of Kyrie who has directly interfered with Sora's heart. Could this be why Sora and those whose hearts are connected to him were able to have their memories controlled? She is a non-being in the truest sense of the word having not even become a true nobody and with nowhere left to go. She is but the most fleeting of the shadows. Wow. That is so weird though. I hope to read more about it. Sora went to sleep in order to recover the memories he lost in Castle Oblivion. It would take quite some time to bring back all the memories he had created in his lifetime. But Organization 13 held sway over Castle Oblivion. Sora would need to be kept someplace more secure. I persuaded Naminé to move the slumbering Sora to Twilight Town for safekeeping. Naminé. As I have written here before, she is an, a most unusual being, born of the same process as a nobody but lacking virtually all elements of a nobody. Perhaps she continues drawing in hopes of capturing that what she lacks, the memories of others, especially Sora. I have arrived at a hypothesis. I believe that Naminé was born as a special type of nobody when Sora attacked himself with a Keyblade, causing his and Kairi's heart to leave their bodies simultaneously. Naminé emerged as, a Ky as Kairi's nobody, but the body and soul necessary to exist as a nobody belonged to Sora. When a person's heart is stolen, a heartless is born with no sense of self, and the body and soul left behind give rise to a nobody. But what if one willingly releases one's heart from one's body? Sora and Xehanort retain their selfhood even after becoming heartlesses. Then there are Kairi and Naminé. Okay, whoa, this is getting a little bit confusing now. Kairi was exceptional for having had no darkness within her. Also exceptional that her heart was once freed. Migrated, uh, also exceptional was that her heart once freed, migrated to a new vessel. Sora. The combination of these two theoretically unlikely exceptions may be behind this anomaly. The combination of these two theoretically unlikely exceptions may have be may be behind this anomaly. There are matters I must attend to while Sora is sleeping. A new ally has appeared on the scene. Riku. Ooh. I was reunited with an old friend at Castle Oblivion, but was unable to disclose my identity. If he knew the situation, he would likely try to stop me from carrying out my revenge. As much as I would dearly love to converse with him, as in the old days, that is now but a hopeless dream. My friend has been fighting in the realm of darkness. Most likely he found his way there through, tra through Traverse Town. Like Castle Oblivion, that village also rests in the cleft between light and dark. It consists of the remnants of worlds whose, heartless, whose hearts have been stolen by the heartless. It is where those who have barely escaped the destruction of their worlds eventually find themselves. This realm between is quite unstable with corridors of darkness appearing from time to time. Whenever a world disappears, some of its inhabitants must arrive, th must ar must arrive here through these corridors. Surely Sora traveled these same corridors of darkness when he first came to Traverse Town. Oh, it's in Traverse Town. I thought it was Twilight Town this entire time. 
Darkness. Oh, okay. All this time I was thinking of uh, Twilight Town. Looks like what was mentioned was Traverse Town. Surely Sora traveled these same corridors of darkness when he first came to Traverse Town. It seems my friend fighting in the realm of darkness appeared in Castle Oblivion through a corridor of darkness constructed by Organization 13. My new ally Riku also affected his return via one of these corridors. He swore to me he would give us all for his best friend Sora. In fact, Sora's memories have been slow to return. That, thus, I have asked Riku to bring me another. Another Sora, his nobody. Sora is indispensable if I am to achieve my goal. I require the Keyblade. I require the Keyblade wielding hero to fly through the realm of light and defeat Organization 13. Oh. Apart from Namine, nobody's retained their memories of their time as humans, but Sora's nobody, Roxas, has lost Sora's memories. This is likely because Sora's time as a Heartless was short. Having recovered his heart and returned to his human form soon, after leaving behind Roxas, his nobody. It would seem Roxas is much like Namine. Namine is Kairi's nobody, but came into being via Sora's body and soul. Likewise, Roxas is Sora's nobody, but was left behind because Sora's heartless regained human form using Kairi's heart instead of its own. It may be that Sora's memories are slow to return because the half of him that is Roxas is still lacking. I must convert Roxas into data and return him to Sora. As a member of Organization 13, it was exceedingly difficult to bring Roxas in. Having lost to, Ro having lost to Roxas once, Riku laid everything on the line and used the power of darkness in their second battle, only just managing to bring Roxas back with him. But Organization 13 grows ever nearer. Here, Twilight Town is where Roxas was reborn as a nobody. This is where Roxas first encountered Organization 13 and joined its ranks. They are bound to search this place thoroughly. First, I should convert all of Twilight Town into data and construct a world duplicate in Sora's memories. I shall place Roxas within that world to live out his days and regain those memories. There is little time. The organization schemes must be making steady progress as well. Okay, if I replay Kingdom Hearts 2, I'll probably understand what's happening. But so far, what I'm getting is that um, the two um, Twilight Towns that we noticed was a creation of um, Ansem the Wise. Tomorrow, Sora awakens. My long and drawn-out revenge is nearing its end. Xehanort, who took everything away from me, though as a heartless, he is no more as the leader of organization. Xehanort, who took everything away from me, though as a heartless, he is no more as the leader of Organization 13. His ambition, once again, is to capture Kingdom Hearts, the most colossal heart of all time. His heartless had attempt to draw out the great darkness of Kingdom Hearts, created from the hearts of all the worlds. His nobody, however, is almost finished gathering human hearts to be assimilated into Kingdom Hearts as well. The Fool. Only one mystery remains. How did Xehanort manage to open the door that appeared in, my, in the basement of my castle? No, any theory posited now when everything is nearing completion would be meaningless. Roxas, Ansem, Namine. They defy all logic, yet there they are. Singular exceptions to the rule. The theories proposed by me and by Organization 13 have been blown to pieces by a handful of strong-hearted individuals. Sora, Kairi, Riku. Ah, yes, Riku. Though his heart and its weakness making it prone, though his heart had its weakness making it prone to darkness, he found support and hope in the hope he discovered beyond suffering. This hope allowed him to stand his ground and turn the darkness in his heart from an enemy into his greatest weapon. When all this is over, it is my fervent hope that he will be able to return with Sora to his land. If I can, I should like to return to Radiant Garden to one look once more upon the beautiful, beautiful water, the lovely flowers, and hopeful smiles of the people. Dear King, my friend, I believe that at some point in time you will come across these, my truthful accounts, how I wish I could have chatted with you again. Forgive me. And that was it. Man, that's a lot of lore. And that took me about half an hour to read, or like 20 minutes. But man, that was a good read. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, so at least we have some context. I don't quite fully understand it, or I haven't quite fully absorbed it. But, you know, I'm tired of reading. Let's continue with the story. And uh, let's see if this is the end game. <laughs>